mind. The mind, again, is a factor in every single meditation practice. The key is, and the differences or distinctions are, what focus in mind? What are, what are the ways by which we're focusing on that quality? Again, to you know, be given a mantra and to just recite a mantra as an example is a wonderful, excellent practice. May everybody in the world be doing a mantra. But as a modern person in a modern age, most of these mantras are in a different language. They come out of philosophies and religious backgrounds that the person who's, who receives the mantra might not know anything about. Uh, the translation might not need mu mean much to them if it's being translated from an ancient tongue. So, you know, mantra is beautiful, and I suggest oftentimes to my students, make up a mantra. Have it be something that is meaningful to you. But mantra is something that a lot of people use as a technique to try to still their mind. It actually tricks the mind and brings the rhythm of the mantra to the mind. And it's rhythm that the mind often lacks. Why? Because the mind is, uh, the brain anyways, and we associate so much with of what goes on in our brain to what is happening in our mind. They are two distinct things, but we don't have to tease that out right now. This mechanism in here is sensorially, you know, ping-ponged around every day by, by imagery, by sound, by, you know, the email ding-dong in our computer and the cell phone and, you know, all the things that come at us constantly the sensorial bombardment that comes at us all the time. And so our mind has gone, because sensorial input has increased and increased so rapidly, certainly in the digital age, our mind is, is chopping around, chopping, chopping around and jumping around and ricocheting around. And so we, we want a technique that will, in time, with practice, Start to bring rhythm to the mind. I believe in a modern age that to try to silence the mind is actually almost a cruel thing to do to, to a, a new practitioner. They don't have the training for that. A person who's been meditating for 30 years or 30 lifetimes, sure, they got the training for that. But for, but for a new practitioner or someone that's got a lot, of, a lot going on in their life right now, it's almost cruel. That's my opinion. But we can, all of us can, all of us can, change the, the rhythm patterns or lack of rhythm in our mind, change them to be more rhythmic. Very simple, more rhythmic. So that they're less ping-pongy and so that they might also be less high and spiky low, high and low spikes. And instead to have them start to be like this. So the practice of living awareness uses a, a number of very simple techniques that we just use. And the beauty of the practice is that these things are not only usable and useful in a half an hour sitting every day, but they are usable and immediately applicable to our life. Why? Because it's a practice of living awareness. Living awareness in our life. And the last thing is heart. Heart. You know, I live in the Boston area, so H-E-A-R-T. <laughs> um, 
we come to this. We come to this. We come to our heart. We don't start here. Because heart is much deeper, much bigger than what we colloquially call heart. And so as we start to work with our mind and give it some space, which automatically will create more light in our mind, gives mind space, meditatively understood, and light will automatically happen more in our mind. As we work with the breath, it's coming and going, it's flow, it's eternal rhythms, and it's relation to life itself. We would die if we stopped breathing. That softens us, opens us, and we begin to receive life itself and everything that's around it, everything that's around us. We begin to receive life itself automatically in a little bit of a different way. And that difference we will come to feel as a heart. And then we can start to work with our heart, practice with the heart. And equally so, breath is going to help us come to the felt sense, the feeling that release also is a natural part of flow. Just watch the leaves fall in the fall, in the autumn. Watch raindrops fall from the sky. It's a natural part. Release is a natural part of life. So as we feel that by following the breath, learning to breathe, that's what I say all the time as I'm teaching meditation. We learn to breathe. It's something that we do literally countless times a day. Oblivious, largely oblivious. And because of that, many people don't breathe well. They breathe shallow, that kind of thing. So the practice of living awareness has these few things that are fundamental. They are core. And as we start with them, we might start with them and, you know, again, an elementary, if you will, basic kind of place. Why? Because, you know, as a, as a native people say, one vision is all you need for a whole lifetime. Well, truth be told, a good meditative practice, one, one part of it, one part of its technique, one skill set in meditation, Ooh, can bring tremendous results if we really practice them and if we really let those results arise within us, open us, and then bring them into our life. So that's the practice of living awareness. And feel free to join us. It's free every day.